the soul's separation from its source and descent into the realm of matter is described as involution. Any movement back toward the source is called evolution. The cosmic context of involution and evolution, when viewed as the path taken on the soul's journey away from and back to the Creator, will be an important consideration when we later consider the creation and evolution of life on Earth. The typical portrayal of involution is a descending arc. Evolution begins as the point when the soul realizes its self-imposed isolation and chooses to move back to the companionship with its source. Whereas involution is a slippery slope, the long evolutionary journey of the soul back to its source is a lesson in patience. It is not at all clear when the souls began the descent into the physical universe. Although the initial burst of the Big Bang was apparently over in only a few brief moments, it took billions of years for matter to condense into the galaxies, solar systems, and planets that we can now perceive. The wandering souls explored many systems within the galaxies of the cosmos. Initially, a close connection with the spiritual realm was maintained. With the lowering of the vibratory energy rate that resulted from some souls' increasing involvement in the relative denseness of matter, the consciousness of the soaring souls drifted farther and farther away from the awareness of the spiritual first cause. When asked what it is about other systems within our universe that attracts souls, Edgar Cayce replied that it is the diversity of experience that such systems provide that meets the needs of each idiosyncratic soul. Cayce went on to explain that there are millions of such systems within the universe. To facilitate the passage of souls between these systems, there are centers that function as cosmic portals. Scientists have hypothesized the existence of wormholes in the space-time continuum that can allow for almost instantaneous transport across the astronomical distances of the universe. Science fiction writers have utilized such concepts as stargates between interstellar systems. Edgar Cayce identified the star Arcturus as an important cosmic portal for the souls passing from this solar system to other systems. For those who ponder the question regarding the possibility of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, Edgar Cayce's readings answer in the affirmative. In several readings, Casey discussed the reality of extraterrestrial life. He even referred explicitly to other people of the universe and to visitations of those from other spheres. However, the precise nature of the alien life forms is uncertain. In the first place, the soul's descent into the material universe was widespread. When discussing life in other places in the universe, Casey may have simply been referring to these wandering souls who have taken up residence in other realms. In Casey's cosmology, souls are actually quite mobile. Movement between systems in the universe is apparently common and part of the larger plan for soul development. In fact, all the souls on Earth have at one point or another explored other systems in the universe. In that sense, all souls are truly citizens of the universe. However, it must be pointed out that universal citizenship does not require the flesh bodies found on Earth. Eventually, a group of wandering souls discovered our local solar system with its hospitable sun and planets. By the way, 
we who are now incarnated in the earth are part of that group of wandering souls. Each planet in this system has its own unique qualities that provide opportunities for soul growth and development. The adaptive souls moved from one planet to another in cycles that we would regard as birth and death. In truth, there is no death for the soul, only a passage or transition from one realm to another. To sojourn is to stay as a temporary resident. The Casey readings refer to the temporary inhabitation of the planets in this system as planetary sojourns. A temporary residency implies more than a simple tourist excursion. A sojourn implies an investment of time and energy in a locale before moving on to the next destination. This is exactly the meaning of sojourn in the Casey readings, whether it be a sojourn on the earth in a physical body or one of the other heavenly bodies in some other vehicle, the soul entity cannot stay put in any particular place for too long without becoming stuck and losing the potential for evolving back to the source. Keep in mind the concept of multidimensional reality that was discussed in conjunction with string theory. Planetary sojourns are part of the soul's journey through the dimensions of consciousness of this solar system. When human beings finally do travel to other planets in our solar system, they will likely see exactly what the unmanned probes have found. No obvious signs of life, and particularly no indication of advanced life form. If astronauts could alter their consciousness to the dimensional vibrations of each planet, they might be astounded by the presence of souls going about the business of growth and development. Casey compared the activity in the various planetary sojourns to the educational programs of great universities that are known and revered for advanced specialized training. Just as a university may have a reputation for having a particularly good music, drama, mathematics, or business program, each planet in this solar system has its own special area of study and achievement. Thus the planetary system and cosmos as a whole provides the soul with diverse opportunities to grow and develop. The ancients were aware of these patterns. The Greek and Roman pantheon of gods correspond to the planets to which they are associated. The unique characteristics of these gods form the lessons to be learned in the interlife education program. As the Bible and Edgar Cayce have noted, we are truly gods in the making. The planetary sojourns provide the classrooms for our advanced curriculum. In the sections that follow, we will take a brief tour of the cosmic universities in our local solar system and explore how they fit into the broader context of the soul's journey. Being the closest to the Sun, Mercury's orbit is faster than any other planet. In fact, this small orb derives its name from the speed with which it moves across the sky. In the Roman pantheon, Mercury was the god of commerce, travel, and thievery. The Greeks called this god Hermes, a swift messenger with winged hat and boots. Hermes carried a caduceus which is now associated with the medical profession. Traditionally, Mercury is known for quickness of wit, eloquence, and communications. These are qualities that Edgar Cayce also linked to the consciousness of this planet. In the readings, Mercury is the plane of consciousness dedicated to the development of high mental abilities. One reading ascribes seven dimensions to this planetary sojourn. Venus, the second planet from the Sun, was worshipped by the Romans as the goddess of love and beauty. 
In ancient Greece, Venus was called Aphrodite. Babylonians knew her as Ishtar, the brightest of the planets viewed by the ancients. Venus was known as the morning star and evening star, depending on which side of the sun it happens to be. The soul lessons learned in the consciousness of Venus relate to all aspects of love, parental love, filial love, love of nature, and so forth. The Venus experience also gives the soul a greater appreciation and predisposition for aesthetics, as in love of art, music, and all things beautiful. The readings state that Venus is a four-dimensional realm of consciousness. Understandably, the three-dimensional experience of Earth is the most familiar of any in our solar system. In one primary respect, the Earth experience is a capstone for the soul's education in this little corner of the galaxy. In the Earth experience, the soul gets to apply all of the lessons learned in the other planetary soul journeys, sort of an advanced liberal arts curriculum. The primary lesson for each soul incarnating in the Earth's realm is to become master of the flesh body with its powerful organs of sensation, sensuality. Appropriately, the bloody red planet Mars was the Roman god of war. This deity was so important to the aggressive Romans that a month of the year, March, was named in its honor. As a planetary soldier and for the soul, the single dimension of Mars consciousness projects energy and elicits activity. The challenge of the Mars influence is to direct the energy and activity in constructive channels rather than allowing anger to dominate. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, was the king of the Roman gods. Also called Jove, hence jovial, this benevolent deity was said to rule the course of human affairs. In the Casey cosmology, the universal consciousness associated with Jupiter is usually positive in its emphasis on the strength, broadness of vision, and ennobling influences in all aspects of life. The soul lessons of Jupiter can be especially important for anyone desiring positions of leadership or power, whether financial or political, or interested in mass movements of any sort. The readings most often described five dimensions to this important planetary soldier. The sixth planet from the Sun, Saturn, served as the ancient god of harvest or time of reaping. This deity is typically pictured holding a curved sickle that is associated with the image of Old Father Time. Celebrations dedicated to Saturn were typically wild affairs featuring license, feasting, and cessation of public works. Casey's depiction of the Saturn planetary sojourn is that of sudden changes and the beginning of earthly woes. The fiery environs of Saturn is a place where all insufficient matter is cast for purification. This is a realm for souls requiring serious rehabilitation and renewal. To use a computer analogy, the Saturn experience is like the reformatting of a drive that contains a virus or defective software. In a discussion of the multi-dimensional nature of this solar system, one reading uses the word nil in describing the number of dimensions for Saturn. In other words, the soul gets wiped clean and starts fresh. 
Have you ever wondered what happens to souls who commit unspeakable atrocities? Maybe a sojourn or two in Saturn is the solution. Uranus is the ancient Greek deity of the sky. The mythological tale is that Uranus had a violent argument with his wife Gaia, or Earth, and the couple split up. The sky and Earth have been apart ever since. In the Casey cosmology, Uranus is the realm of eccentricity and extremes. The radical nature of this planetary sojourn can manifest as either very good or very bad, but seldom in moderation. The consciousness associated with Uranus is that of the psychic or occult. One Casey reading attributes eight dimensions to this planetary sojourn. According to Casey, waves of souls incarnating from Uranus played an important role in the sunken land of Atlantis. The extremism and psychic abilities of the Atlanteans led to a divided society with a very high technology capable of destroying the culture. The readings observed that a major wave of souls with Atlantean past lives and recent Uranian sojourns reincarnated in the early 20th century. Neptune the Roman god of the sea was called Poseidon by the Greeks. Neptune is typically depicted holding a three-pronged trident. In the Casey cosmology, Neptune is a sojourn of mysticism and spiritual insight. A precise number of dimensions is not given for Neptune. The readings simply say, many. As with the ancient Greeks and Romans, the readings associated Neptune with water. Souls under the influence of Neptune were advised to either live near water, a benevolent influence that increases psychic or mystic powers, or avoid water, an adverse influence that could lead to maritime disaster. Pluto the ninth planet from the Sun is named after the Roman god of the underworld, lord of the dead, and giver of wealth. The planet was officially discovered in 1930, following years of speculation about its probable existence based on anomalies in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. Vulcan was one of several possible designations in contention for this tiny orb, prior to its officially being named Pluto. Edgar Cayce sometimes referred to Pluto as Vulcan. Some experts also believe that Cayce may have referred to Pluto as Septimus, although there is no explicit reference in this regard. As an astrological influence based on planetary sojourns, Cayce usually described Pluto as an adverse experience, with one reading explicitly associating it with self-centeredness. Pluto's relatively weak influence on human evolution can be expected to increase within the next 200 years. For those readers familiar with astrology, it may seem a bit peculiar to focus so much attention on planetary influences without even a mention of the constellations. Although the readings do occasionally mention the influence of constellations, the emphasis is heavily weighted toward planetary sojourns as the foundation of Edgar Cayce's system of astrology. Planetary sojourns only matter to the extent that souls inhabited those orbs and thus respond to the vibratory energy of those realms when the planets are in certain astronomical positions that facilitate an energy resonance with the soul. One of the important implications of Casey's model 
is that in order for constellations to have a similar astrological impact, souls must have also resided in those distant realms. Thus Casey's astrology leads back to the theme of universal citizenship. Distant star systems are like exotic ports of call along the path of the soul's journey through materiality. Ancient systems of astrology recognized the associations between planetary alignments and specific traits and urges. On the whole, these patterns coincide with the patterns of Casey's planetary soldiers. The ancients looked up into the heavens at night and noticed patterns of movement. They assigned meaning to the patterns that related to their daily lives in practical ways, omens, prophecy, explanation for behaviors or urges, and so forth. Modern astronomers also look into the heaven and record patterns but fail to see any connection to their daily lives or innermost experiences. For those with a scientifically oriented worldview, astrology is simply an outdated and unscientific predecessor to astronomy. Casey regards astrology as a valid human endeavor. The position of planets and other heavenly bodies is somehow intimately connected to our innermost thoughts, emotions, and urges. The basis for these associations is not simply geometry or alignments of heavenly bodies in any mathematical sense. It is because we were there. Each of us has sojourned in the planetary realms of this solar system and other systems in the vastness of interstellar space. The planets and stars do not control our destiny. It is a matter of how we used our will to make choices in each of the various realms of consciousness associated with the planets and star systems of the cosmos. If we used our will to make constructive choices and actions, the influence of a given planet or constellation will be benevolent. If we made destructive, i.e. selfish, choices in those realms, the influence is adverse. With regard to astrological influences, we are simply meeting the choices that we have made in the past. Nothing surpasses the use of will. The choices we make in the present supersede those of the past. The gift of will is both a blessing and a curse, depending on how we use it. Casey's cosmology, the human body is like a radio receiver and transmitter that is capable of receiving and sending information via subtle energies. This is the basis for how planetary sojourns and astrology in general influences our consciousness. We resonate to the planets and stars. Whether the vibration we pick up is a positive or negative influence, depends on how we used our will in those realms. Of course we have the choice to ignore the signal just as we would a radio station that we find boring. To carry our analogy a step further, imagine that our ability to perceive the subtle vibrations associated with planets and stars is like a radio in an automobile that is traveling through mountains. The signal is sometimes stronger or weaker or entirely undetectable depending on where we are located in relation to the terrain and the signal. Likewise, as we travel through the universe, riding the surface of this planet, our bodies are more or less able to resonate to the vibration of heavenly bodies depending upon our relative position. Let me share a personal experience that is analogous to Casey's model of the astrological influences. Several years ago, I had a pleasant trip to Costa Rica where I gave a series of lectures. Each morning, I walked in the neighborhood where I was staying and enjoyed the architecture which included an impressive new government building. Several months after my trip, I walked past the television set that carried a news story about the government building in Costa Rica. Hostages had been taken and were being held in the building by men seeking the release of prisoners. 
As I watched the program, thoughts and feelings washed over me. Memories of the people I had met came into my mind, and I wondered if anyone I had met during my trip had gotten involved in the crisis. The mental and emotional responses that I had while viewing the TV were based on my past experiences. Without that trip and the experiences I had while in Costa Rica, I may have walked on past the TV without noticing the story. I resonated to that situation because I had been there. So it is with astrological influences. We resonate to the universe based on how we have used our will in the various realms where we have sojourned. The image of souls taking flight from one planet to another is a common theme in ancient traditions throughout the world. In his book Star Maps, William Fix documents the diverse manifestations of the concept of magical flight from various sources ranging from the shaman's journey to modern parapsychological research on out-of-body experiences. Of particular note is the pyramid text of Eunice from ancient Egypt that describes how the Pharaoh periodically underwent a ritual near-death experience that allowed him to project out of body and into space. Based on these extraterrestrial excursions, star maps were created to portray the soul's flight and return as part of a dramatic initiation experience that provided the Pharaoh with insights for leading his people. The star maps that were painted as murals on the ceilings and walls of pyramid temples are suggestive of the soul's planetary and stellar destinations between earthly lives. Thus the recognition of our solar system and other star systems deep in space as the after-death realm of the soul provided a foundation for ancient Egyptian cosmology and the mystery religions of antiquity. Based on his research, Fix concludes that the message of the star maps and the many testimonies of antiquity is that man is older than the oldest bone on earth. Man was a conscious sentient being before he came to earth. Perhaps to use the image suggested earlier, he appeared like hundreds of millions of tiny stars that had comprised a living river of light which flowed from an unnameable source. Man came freely of his own will and choice, descending en masse like a shower of sparks of light. Thus the Egyptian star maps are archaeological testaments to the soul's inherent cosmic citizenship and mobility against the heavenly bodies that represent planes of consciousness beyond our present earthly sojourn. In addition to star maps, Mr. Fix has made some wonderful contributions to our understanding of human origins and destiny. We will consider another of his books, The Bone Peddlers, in a later section that focuses more specifically on human origins. <laughs>